Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California. I'm here at the hummingbird plant, plant. and it is just beautiful, but we're gonna continue on. You did see that in part one, but it amazes me how gorgeous it is. And he wanted to show Gary, go ahead, say hello. Hello, <laughs> the ice plant, the purple stardust, is flowering because the sun's out. So that's the nice little flower it produces. So the bees like it when they're out and about. And it's also edible. This tastes like lettuce. So that's a succulent that I grow. They were closed the other day when we were here. Yeah, they were closed. Because it, was, it started to rain. It was really cloudy. Today, we had, um, well, it was overcast all morning. It almost looked like it was going to rain, but everything's cleared up and the sun is coming out now, which is really cool because we're going to get to see the solar fountains working and some of the dragonflies are moving in. So that's pretty cool. But I've got solar pumps in some of my ponds and I've got the panels sitting up here. So it's kind of hard to see, but the other side there, the water's flowing through. So that gives a little bit of circulation for the water. This one here is going as well. I can hear the water the other side there. Oh yeah, right down here. Just in case people were curious about whether I've got water flowing in my pumps. And moving back through here, I see some of the dragonflies moving around. There's a male that's just come in. So that's pretty cool. Usually this place is loaded. The other day when it's overcast they disappear somewhere, I'm not sure where. But usually they show up around 10 in the morning and they stay here all day till about 3. So we stopped around here when it started raining the other day. So I started talking about my arbors that I put in. So this is the first one that I built. So it's my working prototype. And this year I've already got a few things started on it. We'll walk back through here in a moment. But along this wall here, this is the hottest part of my garden. So I've got plants that like the heat growing along here. This is where I've got most of my African potato men and my uh, purslane. So the purslane, this is the edible purslane or the cultivated purslane. The weedy one will grow along the ground and this one grows up. I started that by getting some of it from a Mexican grocery store and I took the cuttings, I started it in water and I've been growing it ever since and it self seeds. Here I've got some purple tomatillos. They like the heat and the sun too. So this wall is facing west and gets very hot in the day and it releases heat at night so this area stays a little warmer than the rest of my garden. The Malabar spinach doesn't really like the heat so this one gets a little sunburnt. It prefers a little bit more shade. Then moving back here I've got more sweet potato in a tote. I've got more Kajari melon growing along that wall there. I do have a tomato in here and a few other things scattered through. I planted a couple of new bananas this year. These are Mahoy. They're a double fruiting type of dwarf cavendish. So I've got two of these growing. I've got one here and one further in. And of course I've got my ubes or purple yams. And I've also got a lot of scarlet runner beans growing up the rebar stakes. So everything planted along the rebar stakes are vines. And then I guess we'll work, walk straight through here. Got some scarlet runner beans growing up the new trellis. So this arbor or arch I'm going to use for growing a lot of these vining plants, especially the fruiting ones. The idea is I can reach up and harvest them from below. When I've got them running up the rebar stakes, I can't reach the top ones. So the top pods I'll harvest as dry beans 
and I've been harvesting the smaller ones down below. So to harvest the smaller ones to eat as a green bean, I need a ladder and I'm trying to avoid ladders. So I'm trying to plan ahead. I want this set up so in the future I don't have to use a ladder to harvest melons, beans, those sort of vining plants. I've got more yacone on this side. This one's doing a lot better. It seems to like the shade a little more. So the one on the other side has got more full sun and that's mainly I'm going to say about six feet from each other. So this is a better microclimate for it. And then I've got a lot more cannas. So these are Canna edulis, Achira or Queensland arrowroot. These are a better variety for hummingbirds. The hummingbirds prefer the varieties that have got the smaller flowers. So I did have some of the ornamental ones, but they had more larger flowers. But the hummingbirds really like the tiny flowers. And to keep it flowering, I just bust off the pods. I've got one reference from Mexico that people have printed over and over that you can eat the seeds. I do eat the seeds occasionally and they look like peas. But apparently in Mexico, and I don't have another reference, I'd like to hear more about that. They grind this up when they're soft and they turn it into a flower and they add it to their tortilla flour to make tortillas. So these taste a little less bitter than the rhizome. So these don't taste too bad. And I'm guessing you could probably harvest them and cook them up like peas. So you can get a lot of seeds out of one pod. What do you think? It's a little bitter. It tastes like a pea. It kind of does taste like a pea, but it's a little hard. Yeah. Oh, they would see they would cook it because it is hard. It. Yep. It's like a hard, like a really hard pea, almost like a dry pea, but it's not dry. So to keep them flowering instead of deadheading them, at that stage I let them get a little bit bigger. Coming through here, I've got my nursery pond. What I do here is, I think I mentioned in the first video, I put cuttings and seeds in here. So I put some canna seeds in and I've got some leafy greens, a couple of different leafy greens. I think that's a fig tree that's come up. By the looks of it, it's come up. That's That will be from seed. And this in here, this is just broken down wood chips or sifted wood chips. And I found this is a good setup to start seeds and cuttings. I don't have to do any work. I just have to top the water up maybe once a week. Around the outside of this, this was a hot tub. I set the pond up in the center of it. I filled it with dirt, set the pond up in the center and it's just a good working height. Normally I can sit on the edge, but it's a bit overgrown right now. I've got some, besides the yellow turmeric that I've got growing around the outside. I've got some white turmeric. I wasn't sure whether I'd lost it or not. This is a slower plant to come back. It's a little bit more tropical. I should put it in another spot. Then along here I've got my ubes and purple yams. I've got them growing on my yam hooks, my rebar hooks. Uh, at the end of the season I can take that down and it's easy to strip it off. And on the ground I've got the sweet potatoes. I think I mentioned that there's a layer of wood chips underneath. So when the sweet potatoes die back or stop growing I remove the sweet potatoes. So that's the bottom mulch that I've got. I mentioned that in the first half of the video. And then when the sweet potatoes come in it's a double mulch system. So that keeps the soil nice and moist underneath. So this is nice and moist even in our dry climate.
I just want to pan real quick. This is all, this whole field is sweet potato, right? All this? I think I see carrots back there. Yeah, well, that's some buckets. There's a pond back there that has carrots. Because I can see we cannot walk back there. I, I can. I, you can. I'm not walking back there. I, Gotta be careful. Rattlesnakes? Have you ever had a rattlesnake down no, here? No, not in here. Okay. I've had a gopher snake, but not a rattlesnake. Yeah, I've got a couple of carrots, a couple of varieties of carrots growing here. I've got Kyoto Red and Black Nebula. They are more heat-loving carrots. I got those from Baker Creek this year. I did have a fig tree growing here that I'm trying to remove. The problem with having a fig tree in your garden I know people like to talk about food forests, but if you're in a drier climate, they don't work that well. So rather than have trees growing in my garden, I've got the roof above us, and that works like a shade house or a laugh house. So how are the carrots growing? Are they just sitting there or are they in, a, in something? They're in a bucket like this. I have potatoes growing in this one. I have the holes drilled in the sides of the bucket. I have a layer of wood chips on the bottom and then I've got soil. With the carrots, I've got it set up. I've got it color coded. So I know this is the Kyoto red. So I've got those in a yellow in a red bucket. And I've just got regular clay soil in the bottom. So I've got the wood chips up to here below the water line and I've got soil up to here and our clay soil wicks up the water so that keeps the carrots hydrated I don't have to water them I just have to top up the pond and under here I have a kiddie pool that's layered in black plastic sheeting and some of them I've put some collar blocks around just to hold the plastic in place And to harvest the carrots, and it's just a matter of pulling them out. And because it's warm weather, I could leave them longer and they'll get bigger, but that's not a bad sized carrot. On the bottom, I have them sitting on bricks. So they're not sitting on the very bottom of the kiddie pool. They're elevated a little bit. Of course, in all of my kiddie pools, I have mosquito-eating fish. And I move those into the pools after I set them up for a couple of days. I'm just looking at all the sweet potatoes, the, the vines. And then you've got nasturtiums down there, oh, too, I see. Right. I've got nasturtiums, too. And they come up every year on their own, right? They come up every year on, the, on their own. And they say nasturtiums is an indicator of insects. I don't have any aphids attacking the nasturtiums. And apparently they're a magnet for aphids. So I know that I'm on the right track when I don't see bites out of the nasturtiums. I know that everything's in balance. In fact, if I'm careful, no, it flew off. I just saw a ladybug sitting over here. So they're working it. I've also got hoverflies moving around. So my garden's set up as an ecosystem. Everything seems to be in reasonable balance. Down here I've got more wild fennel. And that this is my black turmeric. I moved that from a, around the pond. It's looking a little yellow. The leaves are looking a little yellow here. Then I've got my gak fruit and my passion fruit growing up here. Is this? That's the gak fruit. It's got a similar leaf to the passion fruit. When I get this established, I want to make sure this is low enough so I can hand pollinate the flowers. I've left some Swiss chard here just to go to seed, to reseed. 
Earlier on in the year when we did a garden tour, this was covered in Swiss chard. I've removed most of that, eaten it and composted the rest. And now it's the time for the sweet potatoes to be the main plant growing. And this is one of my first ponds. This is yellow turmeric. We've got a few different other plants growing in here. We've got water celery, and that's flowering. That's a water plant that is edible, but apparently it's more of a medicinal plant to eat. And then I've got my canners. I've got two colours of canners. I've got the yellow and the red. And again, I come through here. This is starting to flower again. So to help the flowers open, I just remove the pods. Down here is my chia. So some of these plants are about eight foot tall. Chia is in the salvia family, so I can grow it in the cells of my concrete blocks. Some people call them cinder blocks and there was a question about growing in cinder blocks in the first video, part one. Concrete is very porous, so it wicks water away. So if you try to grow in, in the blocks, you end up with dry soil. So you need to be very selective if you're in an arid climate as to what you can grow in them. I know you water a lot more than I do. I only want to water every couple of days or a couple of times a week. So they do quite well even in fairly dry soil. If you're asking me a question, I'm asking you. A I question. actually put half gallon milk cartons inside first now. Okay. Drop them in the hole so this way that holds the water, it won't go through. Otherwise, it will suck it dry and it dries yeah. overnight. So that's the inside of the cell. You line it. You're say, what you're saying yes, is Yes, I just drop in a half a gallon of so uh, empty milk carton. The water can only go straight down. Correct. And if I was going to build a raised bed like this again, I would actually line the inside of the blocks with black plastic sheeting because again, the driest part of my bed is right at the edge where the cinder blocks or the concrete is wicking the water away and evaporating. So this will dry out, these will dry out your raised beds. Now I know a lot of people back east may not have that problem, but in the west and the southwest, where we've, we're in drought conditions pretty much year round, these really need something on the inside to stop the water from being whipped away. And these are more kitty pools that I set up. I've got the black plastic sheeting on the inside. Again, they're fit stocked with fish and I've got the concrete blocks that holds the liner in place and it also gives me a spot where if I stand on the edge it won't crack. I started adding the black plastic sheeting because that preserves the kitty pools. I found that in our climate the kitty pools will last two years before the tops of them that are exposed will crack. So this is work working out a lot better. And when things are overgrown and I can't see where the edges are, I can stand on the edges and I'm not going to do any harm. Again, I planted some more scarlet runner beans and when they're set up like this, you can't reach the fruit or the beans. So I'll harvest these ones as dry beans and cook them as dry beans. But I have got a lot of smaller beans green bean size off these. My garlic, I've got garlic planted in here, that's starting to grow back again. So I've got garlic planted in there. I've got some canners set up in buckets and in that tote. And I've also got some pak choy that I'm letting go to seed. So the birds have been eating the seed on this, but that's okay, I'll let them take some. And then these ones I might put some tool around to collect some seeds. 
And along this wall here, this is sweet potato that I've just woven in and out through the chain link. And I'm using that as a screen. I've got scarlet runner beans growing amongst that as well. Then down the bottom here I've got more of the ice plant. This is a lot more shaded so it's not as vigorous. So this prefers full sun. I planted another fig leaf gourd in this tote. But this tote's going to be moved eventually once I get things set up. Because these turn into monsters so these will take over this whole area if I left it here and they like to climb up. Female dragonfly coming in to lay eggs. She's going down into the water and there's a couple of males that are fighting. Yeah, she'll probably come down here if she's got an open area of water. Totally fearless of us. I know she's flying around me. <laughs> Now the males just took off Yeah, to she's fight. Like laying the other side of the tote. I know you can't quite get to her. She's down there laying her eggs. Actually, there's two females here. Two males and two females. I've got these bamboo stakes here, and that's what they perch on. So each male will set up a territory and defend this whole area. And this is one of my goldfinger bananas. This fruit will be ready maybe a month or two. Next banana down is my manzano or my apple banana. And I've got another goldfinger and I've also got the plantain all the way down the end. Plantain doesn't do as well as some of the cool bananas, like the Goldfinger does extremely well in my garden. I'm very happy with the Goldfinger, that's my favourite right now. And that's pretty much it I guess. I can't think of anything else, but I guess we can start heading I'm back. back. I was going to say, you can't really walk through, it's a jungle. <laughs> I, I cleared it a little bit this morning so you wouldn't trip. But the turmeric I must have left a tiny little piece here. I noticed that when I was clearing this morning. If you leave a little bit, it'll come back. Right. This area here, I used to have sweet potatoes and turmeric growing here. Don't want to fall. Wow, you've used every space almost. Every space. And the design of my garden, because I've got this pre-existing structure, I've walled it off, I've fenced it off. So I've got a retaining wall on two sides and a chain link fence on the other two sides. And rather than expand out, I'm going to go vertical. So I've been working on setting up more places where I can grow vertical. We have the room to expand out, but by growing vertical, even in a large garden, you, you don't have to walk as far. So you, you're minimizing the amount of walking you have to do, and you're minimizing the amount of work you need to do. So that's the direction I'm heading in. And I want it to be a natural garden. That's why everything's intermingled and growing together, and it seems to be working. I really don't have much of a pest pressure. I'll see a few cabbage white butterflies flying around, but they don't do that much harm. If they lay on the collard, then the leaves I'll remove and compost. But insects rely on sight, scent and taste. So if they're looking around for something green, they're not sure where to land. And the scent is going to confuse them too, because I've got so many different plants that have so many different scents that the butterflies are just flying around landing on anything. So it's harder for them to find a host plant. Plus you've got the birds. And unfortunately, when I turned on the camera, I heard a bird that I wasn't sure what it was, but I couldn't see it. And it was among this jungle somewhere. Yeah, as we've been here, I've seen a regular California towhee 
and I've seen a couple of hummingbirds zipping through. But it's in the middle of the day and usually in the morning and towards the afternoon that's when you see a lot of birds. So it's pretty quiet right now. It's busy with the dragonflies, they're coming in. I don't know where they've been the past couple of days, it's been overcast, but it's hard to appreciate how many dragonflies are in this space right now. I would say there's a dozen or more. bananas forming here. We need to re remove the flower. I don't think these are going to make it. If I like to remove the flower, just cut it off there and that will send the energy to the fruit. So instead of trying to struggle and produce more bananas, I'll be happy with getting, say, that amount. And for the, this size plant, that's a good amount. The gold finger's nice because I don't have to use a ladder to harvest it. I've got a different harvesting technique now, but to, to cut the flower head off, if it was a larger, taller banana, I would need a ladder. But bananas this height, you just have to come through and cut with my secateurs or cutters. Yeah, I've been growing them in banana circles. I may try them single stemmed just to see how they go. But in our climate it seems to hold the humidity better by having them in clumps. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it for my garden. I like to grow a variety of plants and a lot of them are unusual or different to what most people are used to. So if you have any questions regarding some of the plants, you know, feel free to leave a comment. I do a lot of reading. I've been trying to work through the comments from the part one video. I'm not good at typing, but I will try and make an effort to respond to everyone that posts a comment and sometimes if I go to people's videos I like to read the comments because I get a lot of information from the comments as well as the video so I'm an avid reader I know a lot of people that watch our channel are so if you leave a comment it may be helpful to someone else and that builds a community so if you want to leave a comment feel free to leave a comment with that, thanks for watching. I'm going to conclude this video here. And don't forget, do what you grow. Bye.